What's going on, Planet SOM and family? It's your main man, JD. For those of you who don't know, I used to be in the military for 10 years. And uh, here's a random story from my time in the military. All right, so anyway, uh, at this point in my career, I was probably I was probably in for like, I don't know, seven years or something. I was a staff sergeant at the time. I had a whole bunch of troops. I was uh, stationed in Germany, right? And in Germany, there's uh, there's certain laws. Obviously, they're different here than in the United States. But uh, we still have to follow the rules, like the United States rules and military rules and all that stuff. Like we can't really do a lot of things that the Germans can that that are a part of the, a part of their laws. Anyway, I had a whole bunch of troops under me, right? I don't know. Let's just say, I don't know. Let's just call, let's just say ten, right? And then. Um, but obviously, some of them belong to different sergeants. But we were all together as a group. There was there was this, there was this kid. Uh, he was. Let's just call him just for the story. Uh, let's let's call him John, right? Because I mean I don't want to call him out like that. <laughs> all right, just for just for the story, let's let's call him John. Anyway, so it was he was. Let me describe him first. Let me let me let me let me give you guys a picture. So. He was a very skinny, skinny, skinny little man. Uh, he had glasses. He was he was a little white kid that um, he he was just from the suburbs. He he wasn't really uh, street smart or uh, some people could say that he just lacked common sense. And um, he was very gullible. He wasn't very confident. And uh, like I said, he was just a little skinny little white kid. But he was he was a very nice guy, you know, very sweet, you know, but hardworking. Just just a very nice guy. But at the same time, like I said, he lacked confidence. He could be led into any situation if it presents itself, whether good or bad. Anyway, uh, long story longer, here we go. So uh, it was his 21st birthday, right? A whole bunch of troops came by, right, from different sections, and even even the troops at, at our section, they all were just excited. They're just like, "Oh my God, it's John's birthday! We gotta do something, you know? We gotta take him out. We gotta just get him drunk or whatever." That, that's that's what it usually means when a when a military when military people come to you and they say they want to do something for you. All they all all they're thinking about is just getting you drunk and just partying. That's all it is, because I mean that's that's the culture, so it's okay. So anyway, uh, I was telling them, I was like, "Look, whatever you guys do." Just please don't get a DUI. Please don't get it just in trouble. Just don't get in trouble. You know, don't don't punch somebody. Don't don't just don't do anything anything dumb uh, because I don't want to hear about it on Monday from a you know from a, from my commander that you know my troops got arrested for just partying too too much. So like I said, okay, it was his twenty first birthday and everybody and all his friends were excited. So obviously, I mean, when you're twenty one, you want to party. And uh, mind you, like I said, he he was a very uh, humble type of type of kid. What everybody knew was that he was a twenty year old virgin, you know. So, <laughs> and uh, in the military, I mean, that's that's just something. Once people find out, you know, all the little all the all the boys, they just want to, I guess, do something about it. So in Germany, prostitution is legal, right? So they have all these establishments where. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of prostitutes. You know, just like so, sort of like the red light district in in Amsterdam. Uh, you know, obviously, well, Germany is, you know, right there with the Netherlands, and and um, the laws are kind of similar, minus the whole drug thing. So, so like I said, prostitution is legal. So there's a whole bunch of uh, we we used to call them schmutt houses. You know, like some schmutt house. You know, where you could just, I mean, blow some steam, I guess you could say. But like I said, there are legal establishments. Um, not to exaggerate, but some schmutt houses were literally right next to McDonald's. Like a McDonald's playpen. You know, it could be like a McDonald's playpen on one corner. And like uh, across the street will be a schmutt house. And it'll be advertised. And it wouldn't be like, oh, you know, uh, something hidden or something in the back alley. Like, no, it's literally... Uh, an official establishment, you know, they pay taxes and all that stuff, you know, uh, for those of you who haven't gone to Germany. So these kids, right, they, they tell them, okay, this is what we're going to do, John. We're going to take you to uh, this one street where it has a, a street full of schmutt houses, right? And we're going to, you know, get you drunk and we're going to get you laid. Hey, that's, that's, that's their story. But like I said, I told them, I was like, whatever you do, <laughs> don't get in trouble, you know, don't get in trouble. So um, I couldn't go, and I, I couldn't 
be with them because well I couldn't by by rules you can't fraternize with lower ranking people if you're like in a certain position I mean that goes for like I can't hang out with people above me but I also can't hang out with people below me I mean it it, it happens I mean I you know I'll, I can hang out with my captain all the way down to the lower ranks you know it happens you know and, and I've done it before it's just at this time I just I didn't want to do it especially with the whole bunch of kids just running around I was just like nah I don't want to be the only staff sergeant out there just trying to trying to get John laid uh, and whatever so the weekend happens right and it's Monday morning and like a true staff sergeant you know I'm there I'm the first one there and I have my coffee and I'm just hung over from the night before that's exactly what a staff sergeant does right <laughs> like I say you just you just hung over and drink coffee that's all you do so it's like 7 in the morning the troops are supposed to be there like you know around 7.30 and John, John walks in, and I'm over here, just like I said, I'm over here all hungover, like it's Monday morning, and I'm just trying to get, you know, uh, get into my emails, and try to answer my emails or whatnot. And uh, he comes into, into, into my office, and he goes, and he just starts crying, I'm all like, what? like what's, what's going on? And he goes, he goes, sorry, sorry it is, man. Um, uh, he, like, he puts his head down. <laughs> He goes, sorry, this. I gotta tell you something. I'm like, no, please, please don't tell me you got a DUI. Please don't tell me you punished somebody. Please don't tell me something. Well, it's because alcohol is is a major deal in the military. Like everybody drinks, but you know, a lot of people get in trouble because of it. You know, and 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 if you, and if someone gets a DUI in, in in the military, you know, they can either get kicked out. But in the end. You know, we all feel it. Like, as, as an entire squadron, we, we, we feel the penalty. Like, anyway. So, I'm over here thinking, like, man, come on, it's too early for this. Like, well, I'm just happy he's not in jail or he's not dead. You know, so I'm like, okay, so what happened? So, I'm over here, like I said, I'm over here just trying to pay attention and just sipping my coffee. Like, man, this, this, this kid, I really don't want to, I really don't want to hear it. So, he goes, okay, so this is what happened. All right, so here's the story. I'm going to try to tell him, I'm going to try to tell it like, uh, like he was telling me. He goes, okay. So we go to a bar and uh, we start getting drunk. I start taking shots and, and, and whatnot. And then we go to the Schmutt house. And, and we go to the Schmutt house. Yes, it is like, uh, like how you seen the movies, you know, like all these girls are lined up. They're extremely gorgeous. You know, you have every, every type, you know, black, white, whatever, whatever, whatever you like. That's what, that's what you have in there. So he goes, so we go in there and you know, we start we start choosing who who we want to hang out with. Cause I get well, you can hang out. You can hang out like at the bottom. It's kind of what's well, it's a bar slash strip club. But if you want to choose a girl to, you know, do your thing with, you got to go upstairs and you got to choose her, right? So, but at the time, like I said, you can hang out at the bar and it's kind of slash strip club. So everybody's just hanging out, you know, choosing their girl, hanging out with girls. He said he was just drunk, right? He was just drunk where he just, he, he was shy at the same time. Mind you, like I said, he's a very, you know, soft-spoken kid, a uh, virgin, you know. He wasn't really, you know, like I said, he lacked confidence. Anyway, so the other guys, they were drunk and they were trying to tease him. And they were trying to like, I don't know, I, I, I want to say set him up, but not, not in a malicious way, but more as in just a joke. You know, what I mean, when you when you with your boys, you know, and you and all you guys are drunk, you just you guess just play games on each other or, or play jokes on each other. And like I said, in the Schmutt house, you have the choice of any type of woman you want. You know, if you got you got the the young girls who are beautiful, you know, and any 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 kind of race you want, and then you also get, you know, the older ladies. You know, like you know, in their fifties, sixties. You know what I'm saying? Who've been doing it since they were young? I mean, they're just like the older crowd, right? But hey, they're there. I mean, they're, it's it's an option. So one of these older ladies, you know, one of these fifty year old, sixty year old ladies, you know, retirement age type ladies. Um, she was she was she was overweight and uh, just this old nasty lady. Uh, she starts she starts she notices that all the troops are drunk. Mind you, this is this is a story for me connecting from everybody else. So just hear me out. So this lady starts approaching John, saying, uh, "Hey, you know, just flirting with him. You know, I mean, she knows what she's doing because she's a businesswoman. You know, so she's just trying to. She sees all these military kids just drunk. Well, she just she's trying to take advantage of. I mean, I, I mean, if you're not drunk, how does she get 
her business, you know what I'm saying? I steal her business, you know? So she starts approaching John and the the other troops, they start noticing that, well, what's going on? How this older lady, this older prostitute wants to take a hold of John, take advantage of him. So all of them, right? They just, they just like start pushing her towards him. Like, like, yeah, yeah, do it, do it, whatnot, right? And uh, like I said, it's not maliciously, it's just, it was just jokes, right? <laughs> So the, the lady, she took advantage, right? And she was like, she was dancing with, with, with the kid, you know, making him buy her drinks. And he's also, you know, chugging a few here and there. So at this time he was telling me, he goes, yeah, ours aren't here. So he goes, I was so drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. Supposedly, this is what happened. So the lady, she goes, yo, you wanna go upstairs? And he's like, yeah, 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 let's go upstairs. Let's go upstairs. So she takes him upstairs. She asked them to perform fellatio on her, right? So then uh, he's, he goes ahead, you know, like I said, it was, he was a virgin and he was drunk and he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know? So he starts performing fellatio on her. And, and, and at the time he was like, well, you know, he's, what, of what he's seen about, you know, those activities, he goes, well, can we uh, do a, like, you know, a reversal on, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so like, a, like a 69. So they end up 69 and he says, well, you know, I want to, I want to lose my virginity or whatnot. So she goes, okay. But, uh, he goes, well, I always fantasize about doggy style position. So she goes, okay, that's fine. So, uh, you know, he got into that situation where, you know, he was in the doggy style position. This is what he was telling me. He goes, yeah. So, you know, I was performing the act and while I was performing the act, you know, I was shaking my own body, you know, well, you know, doing his thing where he, his stomach just started, started turning. His stomach just started turning, turning, turning. He said that, <laughs> that he just threw up. So he threw up all over her, right? All over her back, the back of her, back of her head and all that. And he just said, ah, you know, like he, he goes, he, uh, he was telling me, he was, yeah, sorry, dear. So I just, I, he goes, I just threw up and I just went, Ugh. So after that, he said, I don't know what it was, but you know, I drank too much. I mixed too much alcohol where I just threw it all up. And he got so scared because she started screaming. She goes, oh my God. You know, I mean, obviously, she got to throw up in the back of her head. So, <laughs> so he, he starts panicking, right? So he grabbed his clothes and he just starts running. And the way the building was, was made was where the exit was kind of like on, in, a, in a discreet area, kind of. So you can get out without going through the club and going through the bars. So what he did was he grabbed his stuff and he ran downstairs and uh, right as you get out of the Schmutt houses, there's there's a lineup of taxis, right? So he was running, he was running with his clothes, and he jumps in a taxi, and he and you know he's half naked, and he tells he tells the taxi guy, just go go to base, go to base, go to base. So uh, the taxi cab takes him to base, and he ends up in his room, right in his dorm, and he said, oh that was like that was Friday night, so. Uh, <laughs> so he said that all oh, the entire weekend he was so scared to come out. He thought the cops were looking for him. He thought he was just so scared he didn't eat. He didn't, you know, he didn't do anything. He just stayed in his house waiting for cops to come knock at his door. So now it's Monday morning, and he's he's in my office. You know, and he's telling me all this. I'm over here like, what <laughs> what did I just hear? Right, I'm over here with my coffee. Just you know, what did I just hear? In shock, just in shock of what's going on. So and he was crying. I'm like, well, oh, and then I asked him, okay, so, you know, did did anybody see you? I mean, did anybody go visit you? What happened? Or, you know, during the weekend, he goes, well, yeah, you know, he, he did hear that, you know, some of the troops who took him out, his friends, you know, that they would knock at his door, but he was he was just too scared to answer. And like I said, he, well, he ended up showing up early. So he just knew that before the troops would get there, he at least wanted to talk to me. So then we went down, we went down through the scenario. So, did the cops get you? Did the cops find you? Or, you know, are you in trouble with the law? He goes, no. I was like, okay, so, um, do they know who you are at the Schmutt house or anything? Or I was just trying to figure out why he was so scared. So, I, so then I told him, I was like, okay, so did you use a condom? And he said, no. And I was like, damn. Right? Because obviously, I mean, you're dealing with prostitution. I mean, obviously, if you're going to do it, at least protect yourself. So I was like, okay, so is that is that why you're scared? And he goes, yes, yes, I is. You know, I'm scared. I got HIV or whatnot. Or you know, he starts going down the list of STDs. 
And I was like, well, you know, from what I know of STDs, I mean, I never had one, so, you know, but what I, what I know is uh, that you can't, like, it, I guess it doesn't show up over the weekend. I guess it just, it needs time to go through your body or process through your body or something. So I was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I was like, if you're really scared of, uh, you know, this whole STD thing, you know, all we got to do is just, you know, make an appointment with medical and then, uh, you know, in like, I don't know, a few weeks and then we'll see if you're in the clear. So, <laughs> so he goes, so then he goes, but I want you to be there with me. You know, I'm too scared. I was like, man, I really got to, you know, hold him by the hand and take this grown man to go get an STD check. So I was like, all right, man, if that's, if that's what makes you feel comfortable, then that's what we do. So we made an appointment that day to uh, try to get him in, I don't know, a few weeks, a few weeks after that day. And that day actually came and I was there, you know, at the clinic with this grown man in uniform. We we're all in uniform. You know, they did they did his blood work and uh, we told the doctor about it. And the doctor's like, yeah, just come back in six months and uh, we'll see what happens. So a long story longer, I guess you could say. You know, he was he was still worried. You know, he was so anxious. You know, during these during these these uh, next six months, and you know, I will, I will try to you know like he'll try to come to me and tell me how he feels, and I'll just try to calm him down. I mean, I can only imagine how he feels. I mean, losing losing his virginity uh, to a prostitute, and and then being scared that he has AIDS or something. I mean, I'm because like I said, I'm just trying to put myself in that situation and just trying to help the kid out. So we went again six months later, and he was in the clear. However, what happened in between was that he went to the doctor um, in between those six months uh, by himself. He ended up telling me later on that, yeah, he did get uh, genital herpes, and uh, he had him on his lips, and also, you know, down there. And uh, he said he got him. Yeah, he got him from from that from that night. And it was just, it was just crazy. But that's just, like I said, it's just a random story that I have from my time in the military. So in conclusion, if you're going to do what you do, just protect yourself. And that's the random story that I have from my time in the military. <laughs> Thanks for listening.